today we will be studying linear systems and their systems, or excuse me, and their solutions. All right, linear systems and their solutions. Your heading today will be solving linear systems by graphing. Solving linear systems by graphing the lesson numbers 3.1. Be sure and write that down so your notes are organized and also write down today's date. Solving linear systems by graphing lesson 3.1 and be sure and include today's date. Now, before I go any further, students, I'd like to point out to you that in Algebra 1, I know you've had linear systems. In Geometry Track 1, if you took that class, we've covered this. And maybe the Track 2 students did, I don't remember. But if you've not, you know, if you didn't have this last year in Geometry Relax, I'm going to go over it again well. But I'm just saying, this should look familiar. We have had this in the past, okay? But let's jump right into this. And the first nine weeks of Algebra 2, quite often is a lot of review. Don't worry, we'll be getting into tons of new stuff before the year's over, okay? And so here we go. First, let me start off by giving you a definition of what a linear system is and an example of a linear system, okay? Now, you do not <coughs> need to know this definition for a test or a quiz, but I would still write it down. A linear system is two or more equations that are put together as one problem. The solution to this linear system must satisfy all equations of the system. So this is a good, solid definition of a linear system. Two or more linear equations put together as one problem. The solution must satisfy all equations in the system. Now, like usual, I'm going to move on. You can pause the video if you need to, okay? But that's a good definition of a linear system. <clears throat> Here's an example of a linear system, something like this. You've seen these before. 2x. You can write this down if you want to. You don't, you don't have to if you don't want to. There's a linear system. We have an equation here. Do we not? Sure we do. We have an equation here. And we've put them together as one problem, okay? Sometimes in books, they'll be bracketed off like this so you know they go together, okay? So, um, this is a linear system. Now, um, notice the definition, excuse me, <coughs> says two or more linear equations. Before the chapter is over, we will be solving um, systems that have an x, a y, and a z in three equations, okay? So, this is a linear system. And we're going to look at solving these today by graphing. And we're going to look at the solutions. There's a couple things I want to teach you about the solutions of all linear systems. It's really, really important. These two things are really important. So take good notes and listen well. Okay? And by the way, when I say this is an example of a linear system, don't think it always has to look like this. It could be y equals 3x minus 5. And then down here we could have x equals 10. I mean, that's two equations, two linear equations put together, okay? So that any situation where you have two or more linear equations put together in such a way that they're one problem, you have a linear system, okay? Now, like I just said to you, I want to take a second and talk about solutions to linear systems, okay? Solutions to linear systems. First, understand that a solution to a linear system must satisfy all of the equations in the system. It must. And I set that up here in the definition too. All right. A solution to a linear system must satisfy all of the equations in the system. Okay. I would write that down personally. Okay. I would copy that in your notes. That's very important to know. That's up to you. But I would copy that down. While you are doing that, if you're copying it down, I'm going to move on. Now, when I say that the solution to a linear system must satisfy all the equations, let me show you what I mean, okay? Write this system in your notes, if you would, please. 4x plus 5y equals negative 3. x plus y equals 3, okay? Write this system in your notes. See if 
their solutions. Now, in order for this ordered pair right here to be a solution, it must satisfy both equations. Now, what I want to show you is that it's very, very possible for an ordered pair to satisfy one solution, one equation, but not the other one. For example, negative 5, negative 2. This is my x, this is my y. If I put negative 5 in for x right here, notice there's a negative sign already. So put your negative sign, and then for x I'm going to put negative 5, then a positive sign, and then for y I'm going to put negative 2, and then equals 3. Well, negative negative is a positive 5. Negative positive is a negative 2, equals 3. 5 minus 2, or positive 5, negative 2 is 3. Look at that. When I substitute it in, negative 5, negative 2, into this equation here, I got out a true statement. But I'm not going to take time and show you, just trust me. This same ordered pair right here, if you substitute it in for this equation here, you would get out a false, sta false statement. You would get uh, negative 20, negative 10. You would get negative 30 equals negative 3, and that's not true. So, did this ordered pair right here satisfy both equations? No. So, is this the solution? No. Let's test this one, okay? If I substituted this into the first equation, it would satisfy the equation, watch, 4x, so 4 parentheses 1, plus 5y, so positive, then 5, and then my y, which is negative 7 fifths, equals negative 3. I'm testing this point right here, okay? Well, 4 times 1 is 4. Positive times a negative is negative. 5 times 7 fifths is 7. And 4 negative 7 is negative 3. Look at that, it works. This ordered pair right here satisfies this equation right here. Now, I'm not going to take time and do this for you, but this ordered pair here does not satisfy this equation here. You would have negative 1, negative 7 fifths. That's negative 3 and 2 fifths equals 3. It does not work. This ordered pair right here satisfies one equation, but not the other one. So, since that's the case, then is this ordered pair a solution to the system? No. Now this one is, I'll do it very quickly for you, okay? If you put a negative 2 in for x, y right here, I'm going to go really fast. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. If I put a 1 in for y, positive 5 times 1 is positive 5. Negative 8, positive 5 is negative 3. So you get negative 3 equals negative 3. Now I'm going to put this order pair into this equation here. Um, where the x is, I'm going to put a negative 2. There's already a negative sign here. So negative, negative 2 is 2. And then where the y is, I'm going to put a 1. So positive 1. Well, that works. Positive 2, positive 1 is 3. 3 equals 3. So this ordered pair here satisfied both equations. So is this ordered pair here a solution to the system? Yes, it is. Okay. So that's the first thing I want you to totally and thoroughly understand about solutions of um, linear systems is the ordered pair must satisfy both equations. Okay, all right, moving on. Here's the second thing you really need to understand about solutions of linear systems. And I'm going to give it to you in picture form. I would like you to take your books, please, and turn to page 122. Now, you might have to pause the video, or you might not. That's up to you. But I want you to turn to page 122 and look at example number one. When you look at example number one, notice that right, notice the words example one in a purple box. Right directly below that, there's an ordered pair they give you. And the ordered pair is one, three. Now listen to me carefully. Notice they take that ordered pair and they check it in both equations and it works. So, yay, that's our solution. But now look at the graph to the left. Everybody look to the graph to the left. What is the ordered pair where there's two where those two lines are crossed? 
crossing each other. It's the same thing. Look at that. Those two lines are intersecting at this point right here. So here's what they're trying to show you. If you take this equation right here, if you'll look at example number three, this is one of the equations. And if you'll look at example number, or example number one, sorry. If you'll look at example number one, here's one of the equations. If you'll look at example number one, here's the other equation. If you were to graph each of these lines, if you were to graph each of these lines right here, they would intersect at 1, 3, which is the answer. Now look, did you notice anything about the answer to the solution and the graph of the two lines? Hopefully you saw it. The answer to the system is where the two lines intersect. So if I ask you to solve a system, you can graph each equation and see where they, inter and see where they intersect. Okay? Now there's faster ways to do it, as you guys know, and we'll go over those again later. But one of the longer ways is to graph the two lines and see where they intersect. Here is why this concept is important, very important. We're going to do problems later. One of them is linear programming word problems in this chapter, and they're difficult. And you must know how to find where two lines intersect. Okay, well, I'm going to teach you how to do that later. So you have to understand the solution to a linear system is where two lines intersect. Also, now you're seeing why it is imperative that you don't get behind in any math class. Because look, today we're going to be graphing equations and see where they intersect. But if you're struggling with graphing, if you never took the time to learn the table of values method or the double intercept method or the slope intercept method, if you've been lazy or just not concentrating, you're going to be in trouble now. You cannot get behind in a math class. I'm just telling you, it's really difficult, okay? So let's solve some systems, and let's do this by graphing them, okay? Here we go. I want you to solve this system here. Now I'm going to go pretty fast, and you can pause the video when you need to, okay? In order to solve this system, I'm going to graph these two lines. So here's my first equation. I'm going to graph this equation, all right? So I'm going to do it the double intercept way, where the x is, I'm going to put a 0. And where the y is, I'm going to put a 0. And let's see what I come up with, okay? 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus y is negative y. If negative y equals 5, then y equals negative 5. So just like that, I have my y intercept, okay? Not too shabby. Now, 2x minus 0 is 2x. Divide both sides by 2, and 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So now, I know my x-intercept is 2.5, okay? Now I'm going to try to graph this. I know without a straight edge, it's really difficult to do, okay? But I'm going to try to do the best I can, because it's really important, guys, that you probably should use graphing paper. If you don't use graphing paper, that's fine, but draw a really neat um, a coordinate plane, okay? Very important that you do that. All right, we'll try to use this little tool right here. There we go. All right. We'll see if that does it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there's my line. All right. Now, um, let's graph the other line. My other equation is negative 4x plus 2y equals negative 10. I'm going to use the double intercept method where the x is. I'm going to put a 0. And then where the y is, I'm going to put a 0. 4 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 2y is 2y. Divide both sides by 2, and y equals negative 5. So my y-intercept is, well, that's easy, negative 5. Look at that. We already know where the two lines intersect. Okay, now let's come up here. Negative 4x um, plus 2 times 0 is 0. So negative 4x plus 0 is negative 4x. Negative 4x equals negative 10. Divide both sides by negative 4. Let's be careful here. 10 divided by um, uh, negative 4. And actually, students, this is going to turn out to be not a good example. Okay, guys, 
guys, I'm back. I paused the video. Um, I apologize, guys. We all make mistakes, and you understand that. Let's just change this problem. Um, we're going to get into later about parallel lines and, and co coinciding lines, but not today in this video. So I apologize. I think this will fix the problem, hopefully. In your notes, make that a positive four, would you please? Thank you. Make that a positive four. So this is a positive four here. This is a positive four here. And a pause to four here. I apologize. That'll make the problem work a little better. Okay. Well, four times zero is still zero, so we still get two y negative five. Okay. Now over here, um, two times zero is zero. Um, so we have four x plus zero is four x. Now when we divide by a positive four, a negative divided by a positive is negative, and we'll get two point five. Okay. So there we go, and I do apologize again, and there we go. Now, I'm not really worried about using the straight edge for this one because we can already see where the two lines are going to intersect because we know this point right here falls on both lines. But we'll go ahead and sketch the graph anyways. There we go. Now, where do both these lines intersect at? Right there. So, 0 on the x-axis, negative 5 on the y-axis, and there's your answer. Your answer is 0, negative 5. Now, we're not going to take a lot of time to check it, but if you substitute this point in up here, you would get 5 equals 5. And if you substitute this point in up here, you would get negative 10 equals negative 10. It does work. So you graph each line, see where they intersect, and then you have the solution. Now again, we're going to learn other ways that are much faster but this is the way we're going to look at today. All right. Okay, last problem. Okay, students, let's try to go ahead and uh, solve this system here. I'm going to tell you something, students. As long as the equations are set up with x, then y, then equal signs and numbers, I'm using the double intercept method. To me, that's just the fastest way to do it, okay? And hopefully this problem will work out a little better than the last problem. Okay, where the x is, I'm going to substitute 0. And where the y is, I'm going to substitute 0. And here we go. 0 plus y is y. y equals 5. Negative 2x plus 0 is negative 2x. Equals um, 5. Divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals negative. x equals negative 2.5. I'm not sure why we keep getting 2.5. But anyways, y is 5. And x is negative. 2.5. There we go. Alright. So let's quickly sketch this line. And let's continue on. Now, let's graph the other linear equation. And let's see where the two lines intersect. x plus y equals 8. Well, this is going to be pretty easy. Where the x is, I'm going to put a 0. So obviously, y equals 8. And where the y is, I'm going to put a 0. So x equals 8. I mean, 0 plus y is y. See how fast the double intercept method is, guys? Whenever you have x, y equals sign, and then the number, it's really, really a quick way to graph lines. x equals 8. All right? So we'll go to the y-axis of positive 8. That's about right here. And we'll go to the x-axis of positive 8, which is about right here. All right? And let's connect those two lines, and we'll see what happens, OK? Now, it's really hard to tell, but it looks like to me they're intersecting just about that crosshairs up there. Now, because graphs aren't perfect, it's okay to estimate like that. I'm going to go ahead and estimate that this is my answer, and that's how far over on the x-axis, 1, and this point is how far up on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's my ordered pair. These two lines intersect at 1, 7. Now, if I were to put 1, 7 in right here, trust me, I would get out 5 equals 5. Put a 1 here and put a 7 here. 2 times 1, negative 2 times 1, negative 2. Negative 2 plus 7 is 5. 5 equals 5. Here we put a 1. Here we put a 7. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 equals 8. Check. So this is your answer. Okay, and sometimes graphing is not a good system to use because what if you get an intersection point like right here? 
what if two lines intersect there, then it's like, is that 1.4, 1.5, you know, where's that point at? But still, the main thing I want you to learn today is <coughs> the solution to a linear system is where the lines intersect. Please don't forget that, okay? All right, that's it for today, guys. I hope this video has been a help to you. As you finish this video now, you should understand the three following things. Number one, you should understand that an, an answer to a linear system must satisfy all the equations. Number two, you must understand, or you should understand, that the answer to a linear system is where the two lines intersect. And then lastly, you should know how to take a linear system, graph each line, and see where they intersect, and find the solution that way. Okay? Alright, I hope this video has been a help to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate.